Before anything, we just hit 4k subscribers just this Sunday. So to those who subbed, I really do appreciate it as it was actually the end of the year goal. So be sure to look out for a 4k video sometime this or next week. Hey, how's it going YouTube? This is your boy Chosen and welcome back to another discussion video. Today I wanted to discuss the possibility of not only Naruto's replacement as Eito Kage, but if it would even happen. Basically, I want to expand on this idea that I mentioned in my previous Boruto video. If you don't know, we are less than one week away from Boruto chapter 53, where we will finally see what kind of direction the Boruto manga is headed in. One of the biggest theories going on right now is that Naruto will most likely die in this or the next chapter, due to him overusing his new form, Baryon Mode. And one of the following questions stirring up is if Naruto actually were to die, who would replace him as Hokage. Sunday I was live and asked the chat who they thought was going to end up being the 8th Hokage and majority of people said Shikamaru which is actually a good pick in my opinion. Some did also say Trashamaru or sorry Konohamaru who could also fill that spot. All jokes aside I, I don't think a lot of people quite understand what it actually means to be Hokage. The basis of Konohamaru being trash which has been going around for a while now is because of his inability to handle certain fights. Whether that be Kashin Koji, Victor or even the or even the fact that he isn't even relative to the Boruto manga like yeah. literally Koaki came in and swooped Konohamaru's spot. Like when Sarada was like the new team 7 or team 7 complete I was like bruh. But regardless Konohamaru being quote-unquote quote weak shouldn't be the only factor in him not being suited as Hokage. I mentioned this before in my last video but Julius from Black Clover, again spoilers, is literally a kid who would probably get smacked around by a lot of people yet he is still king. When someone is appointed in Hokage, they are bestowed the title of village's leader. Yes of course they are usually referred to as one of the strongest in the village but THE strongest? Okay. Third Okage, at the age he was at in part 1 Naruto versus 8th gate guy, who wins? KCM2 Naruto versus Tsunade, who wins? 6th path Naruto versus Kakashi after the war, who wins? Yes, of course you need to be powerful, but that should not be the only factor that claims one suitable as Hokage. Communication skills, influence, wisdom, integrity, and many more is the kind of qualities you need in order to become a good leader. So far as useless as Konohamaru has been on the field, I, I, I mean, I, I still don't think he's the best option for Okage. Don't get me wrong, I don't think Konohamaru again being weak week should just automatically mean he's not suited, but if I'm gonna be honest, there are definitely better options even if we were just talking personality. The reason I bring up leader qualities is so that it would help support the claim I'm about to make, and that's that I do not think it would be a bad idea if Naruto didn't die and remained as Lord 7th for the time being. I think it was probably planned for Naruto to die, but not anymore now with Kishimoto taking over. Now even though I do think Naruto has a chance to survive, that does not mean I think he will overcome the setbacks of Baryon mode. God no. If Naruto survives, he is 100% not going to be the same in terms of power. We could be looking at a resemblance of Julius from Black Clover like I just mentioned before. But let's just say Naruto isn't able to perform ninjutsus or efficiently use chakra. This doesn't mean Naruto is going to become a trash kage. God no. If anything, this could even inspire so many ninjas out there who, for example, just might feel like they're not good enough. Another example, take Erwin from Attack on Titan. The man was no different from most of the people there physically and even while losing an arm, that in no way implied his status as a leader would drop. That doesn't even make any sense. Who you are as a person is what gains respect, not how much money or fame you have. It's the grind you face that put you in that spot to make your way to fame. Whether it's doing music, through business, that is what gets people to respect you, not just the outcome. It doesn't matter if Naruto has Kuruma, that's not what makes him a great Kage, it's who he was as a person that gained everyone's respect. It's been like that practically the whole show. It's Sakura, watching Naruto work his ass off in order to continuously prove people wrong that earned her respect. Hell, it's Lee's determination and perseverance that earned Guy's respect down the line. And because of this, Naruto surviving and sharing that Erwin and Julius type role would make sense. That is my personal opinion, but hypothetically, if Naruto were to die, then the two ninjas that have my best bet are Kakashi and Shikamaru. They could rather go the same way as they did with Minato and Haruzen, or have Shikamaru actually step up like his father said. If Kakashi were to be Hokage, well I mean, the chemistry is already there. Kakashi and Shikamaru were already two important people in the village at one time, so it wouldn't at all not work if this were to happen again. Shikamaru, well, well I mean he's wise and he's strategic. That's really all I gotta say, but if they were to go down this route, I think in the time skip, if everyone just doesn't die, I think it'd be cool for Sarda to maybe take that role as Hokage supervisor, just for her to get that experience 
or something in that field. She can still go on missions, she can still have her development, that can all still happen. But I think it'd be kind of cool for her to really get that first hand experience in terms of the groundwork. To where being Hokage isn't just about jumping around and saving the day, there's way more to it. Some people might also be thinking about Sasuke, and if I'm gonna be honest, skill wise, Sasuke easily has the capability to become Hokage, but again, it's not just about power, it's leadership qualities, which in my opinion, Sasuke lacks more than Naruto. And to close the video off, going back to Konohamaru, I really do hope Kishimoto can find some way to actually make him more relevant to the story. I know the anime is gonna try and do their best to bring things in here and there for his character, but in terms of the manga, which is the backbone for the anime, I'm kind of hoping that Kishimoto does find a way to properly utilize his character before or maybe even after everything goes to shit. But that is gonna do for this video guys. If you enjoyed it, I'd very much appreciate a like and sub. Again, thank you guys for 4k. For 2021, I'm probably going to try and push out even more discussion videos. So if you're really into these kind of things, I do suggest hitting that sub button. This has been your boy Chosen, and I'll catch you on the next one.